Hello and welcome to this basics episode on Cornwall, one of the oldest and indeed oddest locomotives in UK preservation. Cornwall was designed by Francis Trevithick, the son of steam pioneer Richard Trevithick, who had built the first railway locomotive on the Penudaran Tramway in the spring of 1804. Cornwall was intended to be the standard gauge, or as its detractors refer to it, the Stevenson cart gauge, rival to the enormous locomotives then being turned out by Daniel Gooch for the seven-foot gauge Great Western. In June 1846, Gooch had built the aptly named Great Western, then the biggest locomotive in the country, and this was to be the prototype for his famous Iron Duke class of locomotives. New out of the box, this locomotive achieved a maximum speed of 59.5 miles per hour. She weighed then a staggering 28 tonnes, her driving wheels were a massive 8 feet in diameter, and her cylinders were 18 by 24 inches. Not to be outdone by the broad gauge, Trevithick set to work. The Cornwall was built at the crew works of the London and North Western Railway, the self-styled Premier Line. In order to achieve the same high speeds as Gooch on the broad gauge, Trevithick would also need to use large diameter driving wheels, and in fact went one better than Gooch in using driving wheels 8 feet 6 inches in diameter. But this left him with a problem, how to mount them and where to put them. At this time, locomotive engineers were obsessed with having a low centre of gravity. If he placed the driving wheels in their usual position, beneath the boiler barrel, this would have made a tall and, in received wisdom, unstable locomotive. He couldn't place them behind the firebox, as Thomas Russell Crampton, a former Great Western employee, had taken out a patent for a high-speed locomotive with large diameter driving wheels in such a position. So the option Trevithick went for was to place the driving wheels above the boiler, so that the boiler was slung beneath the driving axle. This must have been an absolute nightmare. The layout, other than the position of the driving axle, was reasonably standard. The firebox was at the rear end of the boiler with the fairly standard footplate. The rear carrying wheel axle, however, passed through the firebox, carried in a tube, and was thus subject to the extreme heat of the fire, and it was found difficult to keep this tube steam and water tight. The boiler was designed to burn coke, and there was no brick arch of course, but there were water-filled cross feathers to increase the heating surface. In order to accommodate the giant driving axle, there was a recess in the boiler barrel, and this must have been difficult to make, and also to keep steam tight. There were two steam domes, one over the firebox, from which a dry pipe carried steam into the second steam dome mounted on the boiler barrel. A second dry pipe from this steam dome carried the sum total of the steam collected to the regulator mounted in the smoke box. The smoke box was at the front end but on two split levels. The cylinders were either side of the smoke box, inclined and driving a cranked axle. The cylinders were fractionally smaller than those of Great Western, being 17 and a half inches bore by 24 inches stroke. Cornwall was completed in 1847, a year behind Great Western, to great acclaim. Originally, she was built as a six-wheeler, carried on her famous eight feet six inches driving wheels, with leading and trailing wheels four feet one inches in diameter. However, this left a considerable overhang at the front, and the leading axle took far too much load, leading to failure. Cornwall was not alone in this, as Gooch's Great Western also suffered from leading axle failure due to overloading. So Cornwall was rebuilt, rather as Great Western was, as an eight-wheeler, with a pair of three feet six inches carrying wheels inserted at the front end, making her a two-two-two-two, 
as the leading wheels were not mounted as a bogey. The additional carrying wheels increased her fixed wheelbase from 12 feet to 16 feet 6 inches. She ran in this form for some time as an eight-wheeler and was displayed at the Great Exhibition of 1851, but was not a conspicuous success, being a maintenance nightmare. So, in 1858, the reliable and down-to-earth John Ramsbottom, who had taken over from Trevithick at the crew works of the LNWR, rebuilt her into the form we see today. He retained her giant 8 feet 6 inches driving wheels, the crank axle and perhaps the 3 feet 6 inches carrying wheels, but probably very little else to create the handsome six wheel now on display at the National Railway Museum, Shilden. In 1871, Francis William Webb, who had succeeded Ramsbottom at Crewe, fitted her with a standard Webb chimney a cab and enclosed the safety valves in a decorative bonnet. She was reboiled in 1887. In rebuilt conventional form, Cornwall proved to be a successful locomotive and on one occasion in 1884 ran from Crewe to Chester, reaching a top speed of 50.7 miles per hour. On another occasion she is recorded as having reached 70 miles per hour. Cornwall was used on the crack 40-minute expresses between Liverpool and Manchester, and between November 1890 and May 1902 had run 919,256 miles. She was withdrawn three years later in 1905, having accrued a total mileage of 928,838 miles. But this retirement didn't last long, as from 1911, Cornwall was used to haul the director's saloon of the LNWR, and she was finally retired from service for a second time in 1927. She took part in the centenary celebrations of the Stockton and Darlington Railway in 1925, and the centenary celebrations of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway in Liverpool in 1930 which was the last time she was in steam. Cornwall attended the centenary of the London and Birmingham Railway at Euston in 1938 and the Stevenson Centenary at Chesterfield in 1948. She led a more static existence during the 1960s, being on display at the now defunct Transport Museum in Clapham before finally going on display at the new National Railway Museum at York in 1975. It had been hoped to steam Cornwall for the Rocket 150 celebrations in May 1980, but when the boiler inspector's hammer made a hole in the boilerplate, the idea was gently put to one side. She is now on static display at Locomotion Museum in Shildred, a treasured exhibit. So those are the basics on the Cornwall, an unusual locomotive from the son of the pioneer of steam locomotives, a locomotive with a long and colourful history. She was an overcomplicated response to what was a very simple, standard, conventional locomotive design on the broad gauge. As George Stevenson quipped, she suffered from too much ingenuity. But she also gives adage to the old motto, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. If you'd like to find out more about Victorian locomotives, check out my book, Locomotives of the Victorian Railway, available from Amberley Books. Finally, if you have liked this video, please show your appreciation by liking, sharing and subscribing. And see you next time on Rail Story.